Hi everybody, welcome back. So in our previous two videos, we've been discussing buffers and we'll continue that conversation here in this video. The first video, we learned that a buffer com is composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base or a weak base and its conjugate acid. In the second video, we had learned how to calculate the pH of a buffer using a rice table, which is a method we've been using um, before. But in this video, I'll teach you a shortcut, and that is to use the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation. So the Henderson-Hasselbalch equation is used to calculate the pH of a buffer only, as long as x is small enough to ignore. So let's do the derivation together. We have a weak acid ionization equation here. Water is acting as a base. The hydronium ion is its conjugate acid. And then the A minus is the conjugate base of the weak acid. Remember that a buffer is composed of a weak acid and its conjugate base here. So we'll be kind of focusing on those two throughout. Now we can derive the Ka expression, products over reactants. Excluding water because it's a liquid. And we can rearrange this to isolate the hydronium ion concentration. Just doing a little bit of algebra here. And I'm going to take the negative log of both sides. going to continue to, to simplify here, keep the negative log of the hydronium ion right here. I'm going to split these up. I'm going to make this the negative log of the Ka minus the log of HA concentration of the weak acid over the conjugate base. <clears throat> so I was just pulling the, the product of these two apart here. We know that the negative log of the hydronium ion concentration is what? It is pH, fantastic. Negative log of Ka is the pKa. And the form that you would find on your key equation sheet for an assessment if you're taking my course for the Henderson-Hasselbalch is actually this, pH is equal to pKa plus the log of the conjugate base over the weak acid. That's the form that you would find on my equation sheet. And it's the one that's most commonly used. Now let's go back to the example we worked in the previous video. What we had was a 0 0.100 molar acetic acid buffer with its 0.1 molar sodium acetate, its conjugate base. We know the Ka for acetic acid at 25 degrees Celsius, 1.8 times 10, to the negative fifth. And we figured out the buffer using the rice table method, the pH was 4.74. Let's plug it into the Henderson-Hasselbalch and see if we get the same answer. When 
you plug that all in, you also get 4.74. So once again, the Henderson Hasselbalch allows us to calculate the pH of a buffer as long as X is small enough to ignore and for buffers only, okay? So whenever you ask yourself, what's in my beaker? If the answer is a weak acid in its conjugate base and then and you know X is small enough to ignore, then you can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation. And just want you to be very mindful of that because when I teach you titrations, you need to be careful about when you utilize the Henderson Hasselbalch and when you cannot. And that's why I always like to teach the rice table method because with the rice table, you'll never fail. You'll always um, be okay to use a rice table if you're dealing with a weak acid and a weak base. Um, so make sure you feel comfortable with both methods just in case, okay? Now, I'm sure you may all be thinking, well, how do I know if X is small enough to ignore? I got some tricks for you to kind of quickly identify if that's the case. <clears throat> the initial concentrations must not be too dilute when you're making this buffer or any system when you're trying to decide if X is small enough to ignore. So initial concentrations need to be more concentrated. So something along that order. Usually, as you saw, we're making um, buffers in 0.1 molar concentrations or one molar concentration. So typically not an issue there. And the equilibrium constant needs to be fairly small. So we're looking at K is equal to X times 10 to the negative fifth or to the negative sixth, so on and so forth. So basically the initial concentration should be 10 to the second to 10 to the third, 100 to 1,000 times greater than K for us to ignore X. And then, like I said, if it's a buffer system, then you can use the henderson hasselbalch equation as a shortcut. Let's make sure that works for the example that we've been doing for the for this video in the previous one. Let's say we have that 0.1 molar acetic acid and sodium point one molar sodium acetate buffer. We know the Ka of acetic acid. Is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. So if we take the initial concentration, it doesn't matter which one it is here, they're both the same. You can always check if you have slightly different concentrations and you can check that they work for both. When we divide by the Ka, we get 5,555. So this number, the initial concentration indeed is, you know, over 10 to the second, 10 to the third times greater than the Ka value. So X was small enough to ignore. And that was, and that was a valid assumption. All right. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.